Welcome back. Now, increasingly, we use AI in a whole host of different ways, and often we use it to solve some pretty complex and challenging problems. Well, AI can help us to better understand the nature of a problem, how to optimize existing methods for tackling it, and therefore accelerate some breakthroughs. So surely AI has an important part to play in helping us to fight climate change uh, and also accelerate our transition to a greener future. Well, who better to ask about all of this than Romuald Eli, who is the AI research scientist at Google DeepMind, the company that's perhaps done more uh, to advance AI in recent years than any other. A very warm welcome to you. Um, can I just start by asking you, for the benefit of people who don't know, uh, what Google DeepMind is all about and what happens at your Paris operation? Yes, sure. <clears throat> Hi, Tom. So Google DeepMind is an AI research lab, which is uh, worldwide based and which is focusing on finding AI technologies to, um, to help advance science and, uh, and, and benefit many people around the world. So, so within the Paris office, um, we are 300 uh, researchers and engineers. So some of them are working for Google DeepMind, which is doing this uh, building new technologies for AI, and others are more related to Chrome or YouTube that you are used to use, uh, who are plugging these AI into these AI solutions into their systems. So uh, in terms of what Google DeepMind has achieved, you probably already heard about AlphaGo, who had an AI system, who has been able to reach the level of, uh, of professional Go players. It was uh, around uh, eight years ago. Um, there have been development around, uh, around other technologies to assess and control the information in a better way. So here there is this notion of transformer, which is widely used in the GPT. T is for transformer, so it's a way to, to, to model information. Uh, which has been developed uh, within the offices of Google DeepMind. And another example, more related to what we'll be discussing today, is, uh, is related to the prediction of the 3D uh, uh, structure of uh, proteins, who can be done now in a very efficient way. And the technology we developed is used over the world by more than one million researchers in various academic and, and research institutes. OK, so we've been looking there a little uh, uh, inside uh, scoop as to what the uh, interior of your HQ looks like. Um, now, before we move on to talking a little bit more about you and your background, I'd just like to ask you how AI can help to tackle uh, the huge uh, climate change challenges. And also, could you tell us about your new AI center? Sure. <clears throat> so this new AI center, you see here the inauguration that happened a couple of weeks ago. So it's based in the, in the center of Paris. And, uh, and we are, as I was saying, trying to solve great challenges faced by societies. Of, of course, climate change is one of them. So how AI can help? It can help in many ways. It can help typically to monitor the evolution of the Earth, the evolution of biodiversity. It can help to predict uh, climate risks. So we have some nice applications on that that have been uh, put out in the world a couple of weeks ago around prediction of floats happening, so we can have a, a seven days ahead a prediction of floats around the world in, uh, in 80 countries, more precisely. So it's another way to, to do that. So we discussed monitoring, we discussed predicting climate risk, and of course what is much more in impactful is to be able to take informed decisions uh, to have more sustainable impact in the world. So, um, so for these kind of applications, I can mention uh, a, a feature we have been uh, adding to uh, Google Maps, for example, who, who allows to, to have a greener uh, way to, to go to, to the location you want to head to. So it's one possible application. Uh, we have worked also with the airline industry a lot to optimize uh, their travel. So how can we optimize the travel of an airline industry by deciding at which height? It's, it's moving, and depending on the height it, it's, it's located at, it, ha it has a different impact in terms of what we call the contrails coming from the, the plane, so the, the white uh, fume you see uh, when, the, when the plane is in the sky. So there are a lot of applications there yeah, that are possible. Okay, so clearly AI has a huge role to play with, uh, uh, with lots of things, including uh, tackling climate change. So does Google DeepMind. Tell us a little bit about your role specifically. Sure. So, so my role... Uh, first, I'm in charge of, uh, of dealing with uh, interaction in France with um, research institutes, such as the CNRS and the uh, Institut Marie Curie, as well as uh, several universities. 
So because most of the stuff we are developing, especially here in Paris, is in partnership with, uh, with some research institutions we have here in France. And, and second, my role as an AI research scientist in, is mainly, uh, well, I would say uh, three things. First of all is to develop new AI solutions to, to find some algorithms which are more accurate, who are faster, who are, let's say, greener. So it's one part of it. Uh, second part of it is to diffuse this information. So it comes from, well, coming to this conference, thanks for the invitation today, or teaching at universities, things like that. And the last thing is to try to apply these methods to uh, scientific problems. So I have the change, I have had the chance, the chance, sorry, in DeepMind to work on uh, applications in the field of mathematics, chemistry, physics, healthcare, so many, many possibilities there. Okay, and now let's go to the topic of uh, our main discussion today, which is, of course, about climate change. Tell us a bit more about how AI can really help us tackle this issue. Sure. So, so AI can definitely help, help us tackle these issues in, I would say, two different uh, main directions, probably. The first one I was describing, which is the one where AI is expected, so monitoring, uh, doing better prediction, and, uh, and helping us to do better, let's say, sustainable decisions that I was already discussing, so it's one way. The second way, which is uh, maybe why it's less expected and more related to what we have seen uh, so far today, is how it can help us through having uh, to new scientific breakthroughs to accelerate scientific research and to, uh, to develop uh, new solutions that are, that are not, uh, not foreseen for the moment, unexpected, as Marcus was saying. And I think you've touched on this slightly already, but I mean, monitoring change can be done thanks to AI in a way that uh, humans could never do, because it just goes into so much more detail than we are, are capable of going into. Yes, so, so what I would say is that so the AI is a tool that humans are going to use to scale their possibilities. Okay, so in this way, well, AI can ingest a lot of information, a lot of data, treat it in the right way, try to get some right information out of it, and something which, is, which requires some scaling of, uh, of possibilities that will help uh, any human study. So this is why we can go faster and deeper. And typically, when we want to do uh, scientific innovations, well, we need to explore a lot. Okay, we explore a lot and there are many dead ends. So we spend some time exploring and it doesn't work. And it can help us explore way faster, in a, typically in a distributed way. So this is how it enhances, it enhances I would say, the capabilities of the, of the researchers. Okay, you've talked about some of the projects that uh, Google DeepMind has been focused on. I just want to ask you about one. It's called GNOME or GNOME. How do you pronounce it, actually? <laughs> uh, just tell us what it's about and what it does. Sure. So, uh, so it's called GNOME, which stands for Graph Network uh, for Material Exploration. So it's related to the talks we have had before here about uh, building some new materials and use some uh, deep learning technologies to do so. So graph networks is a particular form of uh, machine learning methods which creates graph and interdependencies between data points in order to better understand which data points impacts which one, basically. Okay, and so, so we use this technology to try to find some possible new materials. So what does it mean to find some possible new materials? It means that for a material to be viable, it needs to be stable in terms of energy it, it contains. And so we used AI to predict the stability of the material. And this way, we could develop lots of uh, possible materials. So it's, uh, it's more than 1,000 possible materials that can be used then for different applications. T tell us about some of those applications. What, like, like what? So in terms of applications, uh, many things are possible. So we can think about having uh, better uh, batteries, you know, better way to store energy. It's a typical application. Uh, better, better supraconductors for computing. So there are many, many, many applications. And so what we did so far is to, through uh, digital uh, studies to find some possible materials, some, let's say, configuration of materials which are plausible and which seem to make sense. Now the main question is how do we go from this to the more concrete creation of this material? And on this particular example, uh, some of our colleagues from Berkeley have used these technologies to enhance and to create these materials and have been able to do so for, uh, for the moment 30 and, or 40 of it. And we are still looking at the properties of these new materials. 
Okay, so you're able to predict the structure of uh, materials that we've never even seen before. You can also predict more day-to-day -day issues uh, like the weather, for example. Um, that's thanks to another of Google DeepMind's innovations. It's called GraphCast, uh, and I think it offers the world's most accurate 10-day weather forecast. T tell us a bit more about that. Yes, sure. So, so once again, GraphCast is about using graph neural network, so same technologies behind, and that's what's what is quite interesting with AI, that you can take one technology and apply it to many different fields. So GraphCast is a project who is led by a French AI researcher, who is in fact based in London. And what they first tried to do a couple of years ago, and I had a chance to work on that, is to try to predict the rain one day ahead. So of course, when you live in London, it's quite helpful you know, to predict the rain. So that's how it started. And then they moved forward and pushed the boundaries of what they could do. And now, indeed, they are able to reach the state of the art accuracy in terms of 10 days ahead predictions of the weather. And it has lots of very important applications if you think about adapting to the climate change and the climate risks. Because if you can predict weather more accurately, you can predict the dangers coming from weather. So we are also state of the art in terms of predicting cyclones. I discussed predicting floods, of course, predicting extreme heat and stuff like that. So it's very, very helpful to adapt to the changes we are, we are facing. And quite interestingly, from a scientific point of view, the method which is used is very different from the one which was used so far, using more physical models, because it was about using more machine learning, data-driven approach, quite different. Okay, so not much prediction required with the British weather, as we've established there. It's, it rains most days. Um, bottom line, though, going back to our topic of uh, tackling climate change, it seems there's not one single solution, uh, but AI is a really valuable weapon that we've got now in our arsenal. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, exactly. It's a very nice way to phrase it. So it's not the magic wand. It won't solve everything, of course, okay? But because climate change is such a great challenge everybody is facing, we should try all the possible tools we have, you know, to try to, to face this problem. And so it can help in two different ways, as I already said. First, adapting to this climate change and monitoring and predicting some climate risk. And second, which is way more important and which is happening here in the heart of Paris, you know, in particular in our Google office, to try to use these AI technologies for scientific discoveries like new materials, new way to produce energy, or things like that. Well, it was extremely insightful. We learned a lot uh, from you today. Romuald Eli, AI research scientist at Google DeepMind, thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us here today. Thanks, Tom, for hosting me. Thank you. Okay, we're going to cross back to the uh, stage just upstairs from here because Julia is standing by for us with uh, Sylvain. They're going to be talking about what the Global Trends offer brings to our clients uh, all year round. Julia, over to you.